What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. As you guys may be able to tell from the thumbnail and title of this video, we have got ourselves a 2022 Ford Bronco Big Bend Edition. I'm gonna walk you guys through this vehicle. I'm gonna show you guys some cool features, some ins and outs of the vehicle. And we are also going to be doing on this channel in the very near future, we're gonna be getting our hands also on a Jeep Wrangler so we can really do a true comparison of the two vehicles and some really awesome vehicles as well, like a Polaris Slingshot. If you guys are not familiar with those videos or with those types of vehicles, I'll throw you guys some pictures up. We're gonna be getting our hands on those guys as well. So keep an eye out for those videos in the near future but check out this vehicle this is a 2022 ford bronco sport like i've already said this is the big bend edition this guy has got some 32 inch tires on it the color is white this is a four-door soft top as you guys can tell so this guy completely comes back and folds up i'll walk you guys through really quickly some cool interior features we'll talk a little bit about the specs of the vehicle let's get started so the Big Bend Edition is what you will have when you move right up from the base level model. There's a ton of different trim levels with these types of cars. So this is basically going to be your first stop when moving up from a baseline option. You've got your nice color matched Ford Bronco grille. You do have fog lights on this trim package. You've got the nice LED headlights. These are 17 inch wheels. These are currently wrapped in a 32 inch tire, specifically these guys are a 255-75R17. You can get this in a two-door or a four-door. Obviously, we've got this in a four-door. It comes in a hard top or a soft top. The hard tops are significantly hard to find right now due to overall like manufacturing shortages and stuff like that. A really cool thing about these types of cars, right? So obviously, you can tell by looking at it, they're pretty much made to compete with the Jeep Wrangler. Now, similar to a Jeep Wrangler, these doors are completely removable, but the rear view mirrors are actually mounted to the vehicle, not the door, as you can see right here. So if you were to take these guys off, unlike a Jeep Wrangler, you would lose, um, you know, where you would lose your rear view mirrors, these actually stay on. But check this out, guys, when you open your door all the way, there is not a whole lot of wiggle room a room for forgiveness, but a cool feature nonetheless. Walk around to the back of the vehicle. You've got smart lock technology. So let's see, how does this thing work? It's an interesting backdoor system in that when you open it up slowly initially, you can let go. And this little hydraulic piston thing right here will actually open the door the rest of the way for you. A lot of room back in here it is very spacious you can actually lift this guy up it's got a little compartment for storage right here you've got your your spare wheel jack stuff right in there close that guy back up we've got a little 12 volt thing right here like i said a decent amount of spacious room this guy is very easy to fold up um let me see there we go just a little two latch system and then this guy would fold up right here if we were going to take the top all the way back down. But look how easy it was to close it, guys. Just the weight of it dropping locked these guys back in place here. Plenty of room back in here if you wanted to do like, you know, folding chairs, beach towels, a cooler. There's a ton of stuff that you could do back here. You could throw the dog back in here. Lots of stuff, um, lots of room rather to carry around a ton of stuff. Now the suspension components on this guy are going to be very basic, very standard. You're not going to have like the IBOC or the EBOC or however you say it, suspension that you can get in like say the Sasquatch model or something like that. But it is a very comfortable ride. I will be doing a little ride along for you guys so you guys can see how it drives. This one that I have right here is the 2.3 liter, um, which is a, obviously it's not the 2.7 V6. It's coming into a 10 speed transmission they do actually come in a stick shift mode if you want them similar to the hard top style um, of these vehicles they're just a little bit hard to get a hold of right now due to shortages and difficulties in manufacturing before we hop in the front seat i'll just give you guys a little look see at the back seat right now i can move my additional camera out of the way so 
not a lot of leg room if you're a larger individual like myself i'm 6'2 230 pounds so for reference you can fit back in here you won't have a lot of leg room if the driver is also a larger individual that has long legs and needs room to reach the pedals back here there's not a whole lot going on um you've got your little like rope mesh storage system right here you're not going to have any cup holders back here i actually thought that was pretty interesting it seems like there's only two cup holders in this entire vehicle i guess not like a huge deal but i mean i popped in here and noticed like technically you can fit five people in here but there's only four cup holders so i just thought that was interesting i really do like the coloring of this vehicle you've got your two-tone like ash gray on black um, door panel trim type stuff right here which obviously will match the interior of the car these are claw seats i believe i've mentioned this already as far as what you got back here these are for your windows for the passengers you've got your i believe these should be yep these are two usbs and then you've got your standard 110 volt or i'm sorry yeah 110 volt standard outlet just like you would have in a house all right so now we get to hop up in the front one cool thing i'll mention right here you've got like handles right on this side and on the same side for your passenger and there's another one right in here i guess maybe if people are planning on lifting these things you may need a little bit of help to reach up and grab to pull yourself up and in but we're in the car now it is a push start ford bronco there on the engine return to sport mode is on so when i turned the vehicle off initially it was in sport mode so it's asking do you want to go right back into that so we're going to say yes and now let's do a little drive around so you guys can see how this car runs so this car does have a couple different drive modes to sort through them it's really easy this dial just turns side to side and when you do that as you can see it's changing through the different options right now we're going to keep it in sport which is fine drop it into drive right now and now we are good woo, to take off overall it's a pretty it's a pretty nice dash system obviously you've got your touchscreen display you will have navigation options right here you've got a digital dashboard as well as the standard speedometer over here where you can see your miles per hour here you've got the option to see your fuel economy as well as your rpms and your miles per hour for your speed i have to say for just now starting to get into this car and driving it i didn't expect it to handle as well as it did or as well as it does rather going around turns very comfortable you feel very planted to the ground you feel like there's no chance of rolling over you don't feel like you're going to be top heavy kind of going like side to side as you're taking a turn i love the handling of this car so i've got it in reverse right now as you can see we've got parking sensors parking assist nice little rear view camera as you start to back out we're not really getting close to anything but if we did this guy would start freaking out and going crazy so for being right above the baseline model you get a pretty good experience as far as features that come with it um, and overall driving experience i am noticing as i'm getting up to some of the higher speeds it's not it does leave a little bit to be desired as far as like top end speed goes it's okay um, as far as off the line like peppiness goes it is a heavier vehicle it does have some larger tires on it for the size of the vehicle so i'm not freaking out and thinking that it needs to be that much faster um, than it is but you definitely do kind of feel like it's leaving a little bit to be desired once you get to some of the top end speeds i might think this is cool you might not but at the front left and front right of the vehicle you can see you've got like these black almost like little marker guides so you can really see where the, your vehicle is pointing as you're driving it if anybody's ever driven a boat before it's kind of the same situation. You've got like your front markers that as you're driving, you can see which way you're pointed, which way you're going and whatnot. Um, to me, it just kind of feels like a cool, fun extra feature. Um, it makes it feel more rugged. It makes it feel more, you know, outdoorsy, off-roady. In addition to your little touchscreen media center, you've got all the buttons and displays and everything that you would imagine, you know, would come in a car. You've got your 
dual climate control for your driver and your passenger, all your volume knobs and whatnot. I will say it's pretty cool that they've like etched the Ford Bronco logo into like everywhere you can imagine, as well as this little, I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but that's actually an American flag etched into right there, which I think is pretty cool, given that these vehicles are actually made here in the United States in Dearborn, Michigan. Staying in the interior of the car, if you come up here, you've got one, two, three, six auxiliary switches, more auxiliary switches than you could really ever even need. Up here, this is where you can just flip these for your convertible top and it lifts right up like that. To close it, you bring it back down and you lock these bad boys back into place. Ugh, there we go. Really very simple. You could probably get the top down and back up in under 30 seconds. If you had two people, it might only take the two of you guys 10 seconds. Um, overall, like great driving experience so far. It just feels like a fun vehicle. Like I may have said that already, but everything about this, it just feels fun. Like it feels like you can take it off road. It feels like you can take it on the street. It feels like you could drive this on the sand up to the beach, or, you know, you could take this on a date into the city into a mall and it just would feel like an overall fun driving experience you're not sacrificing like ride quality or comfort these seats are very very comfortable um, i have plenty of room up here um, especially for being as large as i am i've got plenty of room i don't feel squished i don't feel like the steering wheel is like right up against my chest overall i'm i'm pretty surprised not surprised but i guess i'm surprised at how like you know impressed i am at this car especially given that it's like one step above the baseline model for ford bronco for a vehicle that has not been back in production for a very long time as you guys know these guys took a very long break from being in production um, after they were discontinued but then they got brought back to be an immediate competitor a direct competitor with the jeep wrangler after a little bit of poking around i can already tell these are going to be extremely easy vehicles to work on um, like I said like two minutes of poking around these guys can come off in a jiffy these back bumpers they're kind of like a, <laughs> a plastic composite material um, so I would imagine these guys if you're any type of real off-roading enthusiast you're going to be removing those but if not you've got your little you know easy access points for sensors now this guy does have these guys already as far as the backup sensors go for the camera right here but if you didn't you've already got your cutout points or you already know exactly where you need to be going to install them the soft top not my cup of tea but it's not the end of the world it actually does create like a nice little two-tone black on white look to the vehicle which i do like the front bumper is the same thing it's honestly surprisingly enough guys these bumpers are like the exact same like type of abs or whatever plastic composite material as the fender flares which is a little concerning however the front end is a little bit beefier you know you do have your tow hooks you do have your little brush guard you know sweep thing down here so it actually creates a nice little aggressive look for the underside of the bronco now we'll touch on these guys a little bit too so these were like those front facing markers that we talked about that you could see when you were driving the vehicle almost sort of like if you've ever driven a boat before now these actually are anchor tie down points believe it or not now they only have a max capacity of 150 pounds each I don't really know what you would be securing using the front of your vehicle. I, I imagine maybe if you had a kayak or something that was sticking out far up in the front, you could use these as mounting tie down, um, you know, points of, of securing your tie downs, I guess. I probably wouldn't do that, but you know, to each their own, it is a feature that is available. And again, this is only one tier above a baseline model, which, for what you're getting is a pretty great deal. I'll note too that even though you have cloth seats in this vehicle, you do get a nice soft leather wrapped steering wheel. A car like this is not going to be as off-road capable as it's going to look in relation to some of the other Broncos that are in the lineup. I mean, cause I think there's like 10 different trim levels for Ford Broncos that you can get starting at the baseline going all the way up to the Bronco Raptor right now 
the step above the big bend I believe is called the black diamond edition and that is where you start to see serious changes in suspension component parts you know the ability to lock differentials um, sway bar differences and whatnot the step above here is really where you're going to start to see those changes and that is going to be the type of vehicle that's going to appeal to somebody who's actually going to be using this consistently you know maybe you're a weekend warrior and you're camping a lot maybe you're uh, somebody who likes to tow a boat to the lake or something like that although i believe on the tow package it's really only like 3500 pounds and so that's honestly not that great given that it's like a completely non-standard optional tow package that you can get for this vehicle but the Big Ben really feels like it's the perfect middle ground, right? So you're not getting the baseline car. You are getting some bells and some whistles and some goodies that you're not getting um, in the baseline model. But you're not spending extra unnecessary money on some higher level suspension and component parts that you would be if you want a trim level above the Big Ben. To me, if I was going to get a Ford Bronco, I would probably get a Big Ben edition like the one I'm in right now I would probably get the 2.7 liter and I would definitely get a hard top one thing that I'll notice or that I'll note rather is that I feel like the noise that you're able to hear in the cabin due to the wind um, I feel like you're able to hear a lot more noise given that it is a soft rag top um, as compared to what you would hear if you were driving in an actual hard top now I will note though just because you're getting a hard top does not mean that you're sacrificing the ability or the capability to um, have a convertible because the hard tops on these uh, vehicles just like the doors on these vehicles are completely removable i'm even going to make the point too that these are actually great family vehicles um, i would definitely feel safe driving this vehicle it kind of feels like you have the security of like driving a larger SUV like an Expedition or maybe like a Tahoe or something like that, but you're not driving an absolute monstrosity tank down the road. You still feel small, you still feel nimble, you're gonna be able to get into you know, standard traditional parking spots, but you do have a lot of room in the back. As you can see, you've got three full seats right there, uh, maybe like two and three quarter seats because that's not actually a full seat there in the middle. But like I showed you earlier, you have a ton of room in the back. Um, so you're not sacrificing cargo room. You know, if you've got a diaper bag, if you've got something like that because you got a family, there's going to be a ton of room for car seats, for the dog, or for the extra storage stuff, or for your weekend warrior activities in the back. All right, so there you guys have it. That's the review. That is the vehicle. If you guys have any questions about this vehicle or any questions in general, leave them down below and I will get back to all you guys. Like I said, I'm gonna be reviewing a Jeep Wrangler and a Polaris Slingshot in the upcoming weeks on this channel and I am super, super excited about all those. If you guys have any vehicles that you want me to try and review, let me know and I will do my best to work some magic and get my hands on some of those vehicles to make for you guys as well. Thank you guys so much for all everybody who's been subscribing and watching and liking all my videos. If you guys are not subscribed, please consider doing so and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. Thank you guys so much again, and we will see all of you on the next video. Peace.